really given Turkey too much hope. No, none at all. And the interesting twist in this is that they're, they're two and up with 88 minutes on the clock. And the player that turns it really in Turkey's favour is Emre Akbaba, who yep. is the player that Maciej Luchescu, the veteran coach, had steadfastly refused to put in the starting 11. There'd been an outcry back in Turkey. He came off the bench with half an hour or so to go and scored the two goals that changed the face of the game. He really did. He was a hero on the day. John's been reading up in his Turkish newspapers again. Ahead of the, <laughs> the outcry from Istanbul. Uh, look, Sweden are never going to win any awards for whenever they play for having the prettiest uh, football, but they've got an effective way of playing. We saw it at the World Cup, we took them to, to a quarter-final, well beaten by England in the end, but they're, they're organised. Turkey, on the other hand, have got technically better players. They've always had technically good players, just not as good as they once had, but they're still better than Sweden in that respect. But they're having a tough time as well, and they're really under pressure, yeah. because the crowd expects, but they've been struggling to get to major championships. But they kept plugging away, particularly after losing to, to Russia in match day one. Uh, so in the end, a good result for them. But no, Sweden are not a great side. They're just a side that gets results. Obviously not on this occasion. Yeah, and they get results because they know what they are. Yeah. Right? They know that they're a team that wants to play direct. They've got height. Uh, they're good on set pieces. For me, this Turkish team came alive after Sweden scored their second goal. It was almost like a, a shock to the system. Yeah. They started passing the ball better. Uh, uh, you could see that there was a little bit more impetus in going forward. Um, when Chanoğlu gets that goal right after Sweden's second goal, I think that just it, it powered Turkey through it. And the belief started to, to actually show. And then the two goals, they're good goals. I mean, that, the, the tying goal was some great interplay inside the penalty area. Sir, you know, whether or not you, you, the tracking and, and defensive side of things wasn't necessarily great, but um, all in all, after that second goal, I thought Turkey was, was pretty sharp. Yeah, I thought that Sweden missed Granqvist today, you know, a big part of their World Cup campaign, mm. steadying influence at the back alongside Lindelof. Today it was Janssen plays in the English second tier with Leeds. I thought they looked a bit shakier than you expected. I mean, how often does Sweden concede three at home? I'd love oh. if you going to bad on Janssen. You tell us. <laughs> you tell us, Mr. Statsman. Uh, well, I'm waiting. Uh, meanwhile, Scotland with a 2-0 victory today over Albania. Yeah. A lot of pressure on Scotland going into this game after that heavy defeat against Belgium midweek. Yeah, the defeat against Belgium wasn't wholly surprising. I think, I suppose it was the manner in which it happened in terms of Belgium also made changes in that game and it could have been worse. The Scottish team weren't under pressure as much as the Scottish manager. Right. Now, all sorts of different people were coming out calling Alec McLeish a dinosaur and, and all the nonsense, but you know, the game's moved on and utter, utter tripe. 